Yeah. All right, hello, yeah. welcome. Uh, if you don't mind, just for the beginning, can everyone please just uh, write in the chat box and say hello and make sure that I know that you guys can hear me. Tell us where you're tuning in from. I'll just give a Look, minute. Fellas, we need to see your face. Well, Denmark. Come on, boys. <sighs> yeah, get yourself sorted. Let's start the video. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there they are. Here we go. Awesome. Uh, Chris, over to you. Woo. Hello, everyone. Um, Oh, Fleming, good to see you again, mate. You've been at all of them. Impressive. Um, yeah, so there's going to be, I would imagine, a few more people joining as we go. But for the people that are here now, we have Nick and Matt with us doing the Matt and Nick show. Um, they're pretty badass wingsuiters and skydivers in general. They've uh, done a bunch of stuff, which they can tell you about. But it's going to be pretty... Um, kind of chill chat guys just if you if you have a question at any point then for sure um either type it in the the chat group on the right um alternatively if you click the participants list uh in the bottom bar you're going to pop up a window on the right just above the chat and it has a bunch of options for you and uh, one of them is the raise hand option so if you have a question you can just click that and uh, maria will unmute you and you can chat to the boys and uh ask your question uh, apart from that just chill, enjoy. I'm sure they've got some pretty good stories to let us know about. And uh, boys, hand it over to you. We're on? Yeah. You're on, mate. Awesome, man. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome. I'm Matt. This is Nick. Um, yeah, we're happy to answer any questions about wingsuiting or canopies, uh, progression openings, things like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we've been at it for quite a while now jumping constant for the last three or four years, five years, wingsuits, so, uh, yeah. We haven't really prepared a whole speech. We're just kind of going to chat. So feel free to interrupt us at any time if you want. And, um, yeah, ask some questions. So, yeah, right now we're jumping the Kraken. Um, yeah, we've found it to be awesome. We've been jumping it for the last year or two. Um, we got sent over like a prototype canopy at first and then now we've just got our new ones. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, we haven't been able to jump the new ones. The fresh ones just came just after the lockdown. Um, but so, fellas, right, basically, what, how, how did you guys start out? Because you, you guys are a team, you're, you're a, but you're not a performance team, are you? You're like a demonstration team on it. You guys just go around the world and do cool shit basically, don't you? Yeah, well, so I started kind of from the tunnel. Um, I was uh, on a free fly four way team. And then from there, I actually lost my job there because of like kind of the downturn. Uh, and then I was uh, lucky enough to join the drop zone where Nick was working. And uh, yeah, and then from there we were we were both interested in wingsuit and the base jumping and just started flying together all the time. And uh, yeah, we kind of got noticed uh, from Squirrel, and then from there it pushed on. And now we kind of do uh, half a year here and then half a year kind of travelling through Europe and stuff, and we do some cool things kind of around the world in China and whatnot, which is awesome. Is that work based? When you when you're doing the um like the so you're six months in Dubai, um yeah. and then for the rest of it, is it work based? Uh or is it project work or like what's the deal? Is it you're working for companies to produce content or no, so there's six to eight months here in Dubai, we're just working at the drop zone, so doing tandems and video. And then the other months in the summer, that's pretty much private. We're just doing it for fun. Um Obviously, the sponsors do get video content from it, and but it's mostly the main goal is just to go out and have fun so we can be kind of more free and do what we want to do and focus on the things that we want to do rather than have pressure that we have to produce something or, you know, that there's a yeah, goal. Yeah, for sure. 
especially with the rep jumping, it's better just to not have the pressure of like setting goals and timelines to get things done. That yep. way you don't get stuck in bad weather or in situations that you're not really prepared for in advance. And I think just by um, being in Dubai, like they've always kind of been pushing that kind of edgy side of it. So we've been open to a lot of opportunities um, <clears throat> with wingsuiting and flying through the buildings and doing projects for them as well, which uh, they're all kind of good little add-ons. Last year, we were lucky enough to do a, a advertisement for a South Korean company, which was quite a good little payday for us. <laughs> That's random. What was the company? I've got a question on the side, but I want to know what the company was. Like, what were they selling? Yeah, 5G. So it was like the 5G mobile network. And then they made these like necklaces that were, uh, they were supposed to have like three different cameras. And it was like, if you wore it, you were given out like a 3D kind of, uh, like a like VR. Like a 360 VR kind yeah, of thing yeah. that yeah. your followers could then watch. Yeah. And so, all the time, like what you're doing. Yeah. So it was kind of a bit weird, but we, we were, we were going to, we had to kind of do the jumps through the buildings and pretend we were filming it with these necklaces and whatnot. And so, yeah, it was, it was, I think it was a good excuse to do fun stuff. Yeah. Oh mate, like it's a, it's a cool experience. Right. And it's a buzzy story. Yeah. Mate, I would love to see what you guys are doing 24 seven. If you had one of those on, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it probably really wouldn't be that exciting. Yeah. Well, especially not at the moment. Yeah, no, for most of us. All right, I've got a question here from um, Fleming. He yeah. says, I'm a tall person, 197 centimetres in height, and find it difficult to exit from a Cessna 208 as the door is so small. Do you have any tips on improving the exit or anything that can help them out there? So we don't really have that much experience jumping Cessnas, and we're not really that tall. But uh, it's a rear door, 208, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, well, if you're no the two, do you mean a two hundred six Fleming? A two hundred eight's a caravan. But even the caravan, I guess. Caravan. The caravan. No, two hundred six. Two hundred six. So that's yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like uh, the doors a little bit further back than a one eighty two. Sometimes, uh, yeah. but it's Sometimes quite small in the front. Um, I would just recommend just sitting down and having your feet hanging out, and then kind of like pushing yourself up or you can, you can always go from your knees right? yeah yeah but i'm guessing if he's on his knees then his head's probably pretty tall yeah not he's quite tall 197 is pretty tall for yeah so, for group jumps i would just try and hang your feet out the door that's kind of what we were doing in italy yeah one person would sit kind of at the back of the door with your feet hanging out and then the other person's more in the front of the door yeah and the following person yeah i guess it's it's one of those things where like the the situation kind of doesn't help you out you know like i just keep focusing on doing your best um yeah it's sweet so cool. well i i guess um for because that's kind of uh uh fleming is asking from like he's he's starting out of it um so what, what kind of advice maybe would you give for some people here who are new to wingsuiting or are looking at getting into wingsuiting to kind of like, what have you, like mistakes that you guys have learned from that they can kind of shortcut in a way? So what can you bestow when, upon? When I started wingsuiting, I was real excited and I wanted to wingsuit as soon as possible, but I only had a JV, JFX 84. So I bought myself the wingsuit, but then didn't want to get a full another setup like a second ring for wingsuiting. So I started jumping the wingsuit with the JFX 84. And it was real good <laughs> in the beginning until it wasn't. And I think it was like 50, I was trying to find a video yesterday, but it was probably about like 50 to 80 jumps in. I had line twists and like the risers were offset and it was diving and spinning. And it was the scariest thing ever being stuck in the wingsuit, trying to unzip while you're like spinning on your back. So I would definitely recommend against that and wait until you have all the proper gear, um, especially the canopy, 
a good fitting wingsuit and then probably also a good pilot chute. You want to make sure that you have, even if you're jumping a small wingsuit, you hear people often say like, don't worry, you don't need a long bridle, but I would definitely recommend you get a long bridle and also a good wingsuiting pilot chute. It'll and good like coaching, it. I guess, as well. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. If yeah. you have someone around you that can, can help you with coaching, it's always a plus. Um, yeah. just, sorry, there's just another question quickly on the side from Joe. Um, hey, Joe, how's it going, mate? Good to see you. Uh, he said uh, he, he has no wingsuit experience, but he's just curious. Can you do a dive exit in a wingsuit? Do you guys ever dive out the plane? So, like, I'm assuming down the hill is what he means? Yes. Yeah, lot, lots. You can in the in the otter, you can do it. Yeah. Um, no, but is there anything that. you would use it for? Oh, um, to the tail. Diver. Yeah, so diving out. Oh, okay. No, generally, you, you wouldn't do it that much, really. I mean, you could, sure. But, for instance, like, if, if you were to exit, like, up the line of flight of a group, you would generally just do a normal exit, like, out to the right. Um, well, if it's a... Well, no, out to the left, sorry. And uh, kind of fly out uh, a, and approach the formation from the side on level sort of thing. I wouldn't kind of dive out to the tail. Um, I think you would make... Uh, uh, too much converging speed sort of thing. You'd be there before you knew it. I think it's, what he's talking about also is like on the 208, you can, you could, if you're diving out towards the tail, you're going to probably smash your rig up against the top of the door. It's probably not going to be that comfortable. And if it's a 206 with the front door, then you're better off like climbing out on the step in the beginning in the smaller wingsuit. Once you're in a bigger wingsuit, you could probably get away with diving towards the tail. But yeah, yeah you'll nice. feel that once you're there. Another question here, and actually I was curious about this as well, um, from Bassam. How helpful is the uh, wingsuit tunnel in Sweden to start, uh, this is from him, how helpful is it for him uh, to go to the wingsuit tunnel in Sweden to start his wingsuit experience? Or is it better to invest in the money and I guess get the wingsuit coaching in the sky first? Basically like tunnel wingsuiting or sky wingsuiting first, what would you recommend? I, th I think it's a great idea if you can get there and you can do it. Uh, I think the progression there is starting to get a lot faster. So I think in the start uh, when it was quite new, um, maybe the teaching technique weren't as good and things like that. But Nowadays, you see people progressing a lot faster. So I think you get a lot more bang for your buck now. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's like anything, uh, for instance, like the vertical tunnel, I think it kind of takes the stress away from learning the body position and whatnot. So you can really focus on the things that skydiving adds. So I, I would assume that going to that tunnel would be a great idea if you could get there and you can afford it because um, I mean a lot of the stress when you first start wingsuiting comes from uh, you know the things like oh I've got to pull you know like it, am I going to be able to pull with this suit in the zippers and whatnot and then uh, the opening and things like that so if you don't have to worry about actually flying the wingsuit or or if you, you're already comfortable flying stable, then it's going to make all those other issues in your head uh, a lot better, I would say. And uh, have, you guys, have you guys used it? Have you been in the tunnel? I've seen a lot of, like, a lot of my mates have been crushing it and, and they're already really experienced, but it seems for them it's like this, just a fine tuning tool. Like they have good wing shooters anyway, they get in there and then start dialing everything in more. Yeah, we haven't actually made it out there yet. Um, but yeah, watching all the guys, especially um, Danny Roman and people yeah. like that, they seem to be loving it. And it does kind of look a bit more inviting now. Like Matt was saying, in the beginning, it looked very slow, and it, especially when they couldn't have the, the biggest suits, when they had the lower angle. Um, 
we thought maybe it wouldn't be as much fun or as worth it to go. But I think now it's probably getting way better. And as the instructors get more experienced, for sure, you're going to learn a lot. Yeah. It's going to be just like the vertical tunnel. I mean, Matt has yeah. a lot of experience in the vertical tunnel. He has a huge background in that. And you definitely notice how that translates to free flying. Yeah. So we all know that that's worked with free flying. And I'm assuming it's going to work just the same. And you can see with guys like Danny and Espen and uh, guys like that, they're really fine tuning the small details. And so when they do get that out into the sky, it, it it kind of all comes together and uh, yeah, they're like they're flying insane in that tunnel now. So it's got to, uh, it's got to help, I would say. So if, if you can get over there and do a bit of time, it's only going to benefit you. Cool. Well, we've got a, a bombardment of questions here from Maria. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go so through them. For me, you, I can, I can start with like why we got into wingsuiting and things like that. Like for me, it was, uh, I was working at the drop zone here in Dubai already, like Matt was saying, and the original wingsuit team here, Noah, Julian, Micah, and Greg, they started jumping the freak. And before that wingsuiting was kind of just solo people or groups of people flying really slow together. And then, once we saw them taking free flying moves into the wingsuits and really flying dynamic, steeper angles, even carving the wingsuits head down, that was when it was like, wow, there's so much more that you can do in a wingsuit. And it's actually like taking free flying and just making free flying better rather than wingsuiting where you're just flying flat together. So that was a huge inspiration for us, I think, well, for both of us coming from the free flying background to do that in a wingsuit and have that extra power. And you get like two and a half minutes in a skydive instead of a 50 second skydive. And we're still working on head up. That's the only thing I guess that you can still do in free flying that you can't do in a wingsuit. But hopefully one day we'll, we'll get the, the head up movement as well. Yeah. I don't know if that will ever be possible, but that would be pretty cool. And, and for sure, I totally agree. It's exactly the same for me. And uh, I kind of feel that uh, wingsuiting is kind of the future of free fly, you know, like the way we're getting our group at the drop zone, there's about eight or 10 of us and we're always flying together and we can do everything that you do in, in a normal free fly skydive except for head up and you even see the fly for life guys and stuff like that. And they're dabbling in it now. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's great fun. And it's something that I think everyone should kind of push themselves into, uh, doing or at least trying because, uh, yeah, it's super fun. And I think it gives you a bigger outlook of the whole skydive, uh, operation as well. Cause you kind of like a bird above it all. So you can, you can kind of see w where the tandems are, are and where the free flies are out and whatnot. And you, you have a better understanding of kind of the whole layout of the drop zone. And so every time I kind of push myself further, I, I feel that all the stuff before becomes easier, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Where do you guys see, there's a couple, there's another question, but before that, I would curious to know, like where do you see um, where do you see the sport like wingsuiting the discipline sorry developing because like it's become in the last couple of years massive in in competition for sure like with the artistic events getting like a sort of resurgence and now more people competing in that where do you guys kind of see it going? Yeah, I see more of that. Like Matt said, like the Fly for Life guys are starting to do it, and I think we'll see more bigger groups flying really dynamic stuff in a wingsuit. We still haven't seen. Well, basically like the tracking stuff that the Fly for Life guys are doing, but in wingsuits. I'd like to see that 16, 20 ways, people diving, going through layouts, going into carves, or like, um, yeah, big circle carves, things like that. That would be, yeah. be pretty insane to see. It will take a while for sure, just like the free flying took a while to develop, to get everyone to, to fly safely. Because that's the only negative side is when you're, in the wingsuit and you have all that extra power you're flying a lot faster 
and collisions, not that free flight collisions aren't scary as well, but wingsuit collisions are probably even more scary. The closing speed is a lot quicker. I like when you guys are doing the carving and then you do like a, a crossover and break off. It's yeah. pretty it's pretty mental how fast you can uh yeah, how fast oh, okay. your, your closing speeds are. If yeah. you want to see a good video of that, the the Soulfires, Fred and Vince, they have a video where they just pretty much like get separation and just come flying at each other and cross each other and then uh, keep doing that. But yeah, you you see like uh it's progressing more and more and every year we try and go across to USA and kind of get together and fly with like all the guys that are pushing that side of things and uh, and yeah see where we can develop and get it to sort of thing nice right we're gonna a couple of questions we got another one from Fleming um, yeah. And he's asked, how good should I be in a current wingsuit before switching to a bigger size, like minimum requirement? At what point do you, do you upsize the wingsuit, I guess? Uh, so I, I guess the fear at first when, when you're upsizing wingsuit is like the opening and the pull and things like that. Um, the, the actual flight, like when you start upsizing wingsuits, it, it, it's, it's, I don't feel that it gets a lot more difficult i think it's just the the pressure that you put on yourself that kind of makes you feel that it gets harder for me actually the bigger the wingsuit the easier it becomes to fly uh it just you you've got more fabric to manage through the opening and things uh like and then you've got more forward speed that you need to slow down and whatnot so, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's w when you feel comfortable and when you're ready, I think you yeah. should always kind of feed off that. You, know? you should be able to tell that you're honestly comfortable in the suit that you're flying. So you can do transitions to your back, you can do barrel rolls, and you're never thinking that you're going to go unstable, that you can't get stable if yeah. you are unstable. Or that you wouldn't be able to pull now like that you need another five thousand feet to be able to pull i guess you could almost say it's kind of like downsizing in a canopy uh, yeah. like you when you feel like you're getting everything out of it and you're as safe as you possibly can be uh yeah. that's kind of the point where you know you're at that you're at a good position to to make a change yeah yeah and you'll know if you've gone too fast because you'll generally be having a lot of chops and you'll scare the shit out of yourself Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. if you if you're flying a wingsuit and you've just like gotten a bigger wingsuit and you're flying that one and you don't feel comfortable at all and you're scared to do transitions and you're scared to fly on your back or or do steep turns or like more advanced maneuvers, then you know that you've probably gone yeah too quick and, and it's probably better to take a step back. Yeah. Because then you're just hampering your progression because you'll be too nervous and too scared to try anything. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's better to do it slowly and do it properly, like anything, than try yeah. and sprint it. And then it just hinders your learning in the long run anyway, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, another question from Joe regarding the Kraken. Nice, Joe. I'm just reading yeah. that comment, mate. Sounds like you've got a lot of our products. Good man. We love it. <laughs> um, so Joe's asked, uh, what do you load your guys? What do you load the Kraken at? Uh, and how much fun is it? He's just got himself a 159 in, uh, during a cutaway sale. And he flies a one four nine crossfire three at one nine. Uh, he goes on to say he's jumping at JFX, but yeah, maybe just deal with the top part. What what do you guys load your Kraken at, and and do you enjoy them? Yes, I well, enjoy them. Um, I can't tell you exactly what we load them at. Well, I can do a quick to... calculation, but we we have the one twenty. So um, I was jumping a one oh seven from another manufacturer before the Kraken. Um, but basically, they recommend not to go smaller than a 120 because of the line length of, a, of the canopy. So you don't want the canopy to be in the burble of your, of your wingsuit. Therefore, if you jump anything smaller than a 120, you're going to have the canopy in the burble during the openings. We, we love it because it's kind of a, the mix of uh, the new, uh, new kind of wingsuit canopies and they're designed uh specifically for that so 
the openings are great. Um, but the Kraken also gives you like performance as well. Like you'll see there's a lot of other canopies on the market that are uh, much like reserves. So they are still, uh, you know, safe as houses as well. But I think you sacrifice a lot on uh, performance and say if you're into swooping or whatnot, then you can still have some fun with the Kraken. So Matt's loading his at about 1.5, 1.6. So I'd be loading mine at about 1.4, 1.3. And we do two seventies with them. We swoop the, we swoop them. Like I love it for doing freestyle moves. It's really fun. So I think just doing just casual freestyle moves on my wingsuit canopy. It's the everyday thing, guys. You can all do the same. It's, it's no worries. Yeah, well, it's really good to learn because it's a lot easier to learn there on like on the layer. Oh, ab absolutely for sure. Yeah, it's a it's a more stable, like uh, solid platform that's not going to rock and roll on you. Yeah, on the, on the crack, and I can do a blind man or like a switch, whatever. But you can't. Well, I can't do that on the layer. So I think it is easier to do it on the, the wings you can. But yeah, I think now we're we're super lucky in that manufacturers have put a lot of effort into uh, making wingsuit canopies. Uh, so back in the day, uh, I assume they had a lot of issues trying to use canopies that weren't specifically designed for that. Um, so we're, it's a lot more forgiving now with say the Kraken around and we, even if you do mess up an opening or you, you've filmed your mate and you're a little bit low, so you've rushed your full sequence and you've given yourself some twists, uh, you know, you, you want that canopy to fly flat and stable sort of thing while you sort that shit out. So, um, yeah, that's generally what we look for in a canopy, and the Kraken does that. Like, and at the bottom of his, uh, is on it, his is question, so he's he's on the one four nine, and he's just asked, uh, uh, would the one five nine be unsafe to start on? Joe, is your wing loading is about one point seven five, one point eight ish, roughly. I think I just I just backed it from your one point nine. So you've got a one point eight and a one five nine. Just second. I think it should be fine. Yeah, one point. Yeah, because it's still it's a it's a higher wing loading, Joe. So I was when I was helping with the test jumping on the on the canopy. It's a uh, I was jumping. I was the on the heaviest test jumper at Aerosports. So I was jumping the slightly bigger ones. So I was jumping ones that size, and they flew super nice. I actually was jumping one the other uh, well before the lockdown, and um, I hadn't jumped one for yeah quite a few months. I forgot how much they dived actually. Uh, funny to say, I kind of scared myself, put myself in the corner a little bit uh, on a Kraken, which I haven't done for a very long time on a crossbrace canopy. So it was quite, uh, it was quite terrifying. But it was nice to know that the toggle power was there to dig me out. So that was nice. But Joe, you'll be fine, mate. Yeah. Yeah. No, you'll be great. Man. You'll love it. Super nice. And then there's a, what are your thoughts on learning turns over 90 degrees, like 270s on lighter loaded? Uh, 1.1 to 1.3 canopies, not wingsuits. So I would highly recommend that. You should definitely, um, that's how I did my progression on, on bigger canopies that were lightly loaded. I mean, I've always loaded my canopies pretty lightly because I'm pretty small, um, but I feel that's better. And then learning bigger turns rather than just doing 90 degree turns until you're on a really heavy, heavily loaded canopy because you don't have that sight picture of doing a bigger turn. So you should still learn 270s on light, big canopies, lightly loaded big canopies. But you can probably explain more of that, Chris. No, no, I think you're pretty good. Like it's, it depends where you want to go. Like if, you, if you're pretty content with, uh, not everyone wants to downsize to a 60 foot square picture, you know? Um, so if you're if if you want to progress, then for sure, uh, and even if it's a big canopy, man, canopy coaches can give you give you the tools and teach you what you need to know to uh, to fly that canopy better. Whether it be doing a straight in better, or just doing a two stage flare better, or doing a really nice ninety, or even turning a wingsuit canopy to do a two seventy. Um, I've watched a lot. Of, I don't really. They'll be able to do them better than me. I don't really do them on the canopies that size. I'm not current on them, which is a, a weird thing to say from jumping small crossbrace canopies, but some of the, the wingsuiters who are super current on like the 
the Krakens and the um, Epicenes and those, um, I can't remember any of the other ones, uh, they do a, a really nice 270 and they swoop them for quite a long way. I guess like you, uh, the boys were saying, the Kraken has the potential, it has the sports capability, so you can get a really nice swoop out of it. So it's kind of like if, if you don't sort of, if you're not, that option of learning is there and available and the canopy's like, uh, has the potential to fly like that. So it's kind of a waste not to give it a go, really, if you're comfortable. Yeah, totally. I mean, my f- that's how I learned. I learned <laughs> from the wingsuit canopy following Nick. And then from there, I started doing it on the video jumps on the sport canopy. I saw a good question there about a play around with the two-piece tracking suit. Uh, and then it says, is it similar to a small wingsuit? Might feel. Um, yeah, it is kind of similar. You, you'll find now they have actually nice one-piece tracking suits, which kind of take the stress away from uh, uh, the pull sort of thing because your hand's always close to the BOC anyway. So um, I think uh, a, like a one-piece tracking suit, like, for instance, uh, mutation, it, it feels exactly like a wingsuit because it's uh, it's all kind of one piece. Uh, the tracking suits, you're kind of flying each limb separate, uh, whereas those new one piece suits, uh, they're really good way to introduce yourself into wingsuiting. Uh, it feels more or less exactly the same, both in base and skydiving. Yeah, nice. Yeah, some of those those one piece suits, uh, especially the ones you guys have flown, they're pretty damn efficient. Yeah, they look ridiculous, oh. but they're efficient. They're amazing, dude. <laughs> like, and they um, really do. They feel super similar. Yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, I've got a quick uh, question here from Lakari. Lakari, uh, what would be your top tips for someone who's just started wingsuiting? Skills slash fundamentals to have, common mistakes, things to try in the sky, etc. So if you've just started and you're flying a smaller suit, um, just being able to fly with people, just starting to take docks is a really good thing to practice without um, slowing down too much. So both of you kind of focusing on keeping this forward speed and then getting docks and barrel rolls, steep turns, things like that. Um, if you have a background in free flying or the more jumps you have before you jump in the wingsuit, it's going to help you out a lot more like angle tracking jumps. Yeah. And then also like things like to be careful of, uh, obviously like if you're getting used to a suit, um, like approaching a formation is where you can come unstuck. Um, so make sure that you're, you're getting on level first and kind of not trying to, uh, fix, level and proximity at the same time because you can generate some uh, solid closing speed that maybe you can't slow down in time before you get to the formation. So, you know, safety is always number one or number three after getting the shot. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. It's a joke but, if anyone's listening. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> yeah, safety is obviously number one. So you got to make sure that you are, uh, yeah, you, you kind of take that side of things quite slow because collisions in a wingsuit are definitely not not nice. So, um, yeah, be careful of that. Getting the shots a close second, though, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Very close second. No, stick the shot, stick the trick, safety third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. I got that on um, mine. This is the one. Then we've got a, have you guys, have you seen that one from Basam again? Um, yeah. So it's kind of like what we were talking about in the beginning. It is the trade-off. If you want a wingsuit, you need a wingsuit setup. If you want a free fly and wingsuit, you probably need a free fly and a wingsuit setup. Um, you, there is no wingsuit and we're not going back to the days of zippers. So it's basically asking, are we going to have zippers on wingsuit so you could kind of unzip and then go back to belly and then kind of pull a free fly canopy. No, I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. Um, If you want a wingsuit, get yourself a second setup, at least a second canopy that can fit into your free fly rig. 
that is the really cool thing with the Kraken and the other wingsuit specific canopies, the low pack volume. I, for example, pack a 120 Kraken into a 306 container. So I use that same container for my free flight canopy, my layer, and for my wingsuit. Um, so you don't even need to have two rigs, but then you do need to switch the canopies between your jumps when you're doing free flight jumps. And but again, jumps. depending on how far you are on in your progression with canopies and stuff, like you can still swoop the Kraken quite good. So, and you can use it for free fall jumps. It's totally fine. So, um, I don't think like if you are real serious about, um, wingsuiting, like I still use my Kraken, uh, sometimes when I go to boogies and organize because I'd rather not take two canopies and I still want the option to wingsuit. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think right, so we're tough. slowly running out of time, but we've got. Um, I'm just going to go through these as quickly as I can. Ian Purvis, how's it going, Ian, mate? Good to see you. Uh, haven't flown wingsuit, uh, he, he has a Havoc carve for 18 months due to downsizing canopies. Now that I have a second canopy, would I be better off going back to a smaller suit for a while? So, no, should he take a step back? No, you don't need to go back smaller than the Havoc carve, but you should go back to the Havoc carve and then go up from that. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, it depends on how you feel too. I mean, if you're really that worried, then maybe think about it. But I mean, it's like having still quite a nice, stable, smaller suit. So it should still be okay, I would think. Cool. Um, from Chris, uh, I've been trying to focus on angles back in belly and free flying. Are there a particular disciplines that will help build a strong foundation for learning the wingsuit? I think you guys kind of covered this at the start, but. Yeah, well, so angle flying, of course, it feeds straight into it. Basically, wingsuiting is angle flying just with more power. So all, all those sorts of things, back and belly angles, they're going to help you a lot. Also, all the fundamentals are the same. So approaching the formation and whatnot is, uh, is exactly the same. So you still stick to those same principles. You just uh, obviously have to respect the power that the wingsuit has. Um, so yeah, all, all of that's gonna help. And then of course, if you start using uh, uh, tracking suits, they're, they're even closer to a wingsuit too. All right, fellas. So we're on the, the two minutes now. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Is there anything you guys want to want to plug? We're kind of running. How, Joe, we're doing another testies um, webinar next week, I think. So you can find out how to become a testie. Yeah, um, yeah. But is there anything you guys would like? So these guys have a lot of cool videos uh, online. You can see all of them, all of their stuff shredding around the world. And I've been lucky enough to see a bunch of it. Uh, is there anywhere you guys would send them to? Have you got a Facebook page? What's the go, fellas? Yeah, plug so yourselves. It's Matt Munting or Nick Scalabrino and then uh, we have a page called the Matt and Nick show as well that we just started but um, yeah just by yeah, our names. In Instagram for our names and then yeah the Matt and Nick show on Instagram as well. For the lads I'm sure yeah. if you have uh, a couple of cheeky questions yeah. here they can they can field them for you. Um, yeah if you have any questions always like you can always just write to us on Instagram or Facebook and yeah, we're happy to there's answer. been a lot of good questions today. And if other people have more questions, always just shoot them through. And yeah, I Thank you never so under it. No worries. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, we're running out of time there. We're just yeah. going to unmute everyone. And we can all say, collect a little fuck yeah. Just uh, give us a cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Everybody's you're all unmuted. Oh. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Thanks. Boys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice one, fellas. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for joining and uh watching. And uh join us in our next one. Follow the Facebook page. We'll have all the updates there. Thank you. Great to see you. Great to see you, Ian. Looking great, mate. Cheers, bro. <laughs> nice one, guys. Cheers, lads.